knows what this is? Anyone? This is the original authorized replica of the first human rights declaration that was ever made. In 539 BCE, there was a king by the name of Cyrus. And from all documentation, that was the first human rights declaration that was ever written for humans. People lived with it, people believed in it, people abided by it, but it was never documented. So this is called the Cyrus's Cylinder. And I'll read some of the, the parts of this for your benefit, and I'll put this down. I announce that I will respect the traditions, customs, and religions of the nations of my empire, and never let any of my governors and subordinates look down or insult them while I'm alive. I never let anyone oppress any others. If it occurs, I will take his or her right back and penalize penalize the oppressor. I will never let anyone take possession of movable and landed properties of the others by force or without compensation. While I'm alive, I will prevent unpaid forced labor. Today I announce that everyone is free to choose a religion. People are free to live in all regions and take up job provided that they never violate their rights. And this is actually how the, the first time the documentation was and believe it or not, that infected the entire world at that time. And that infection has continued on till this time. But think about this for a second because here you have at that particular time the most powerful human from the, the, the political capacity point of view of a most powerful nation of that time, the Persian Empire, speaking about giving rights to everyone and anyone, anywhere, wherever that would be a control. And that was actually how the things were infected for everybody else to the point that the Greek, the Romans, and all other empires at some level started to feel that that was something that they needed to aspire for. Keep in mind that there are two forces in these situations. When you are in the position of authority and responsibility, you have another force which tells you that you are better than the other that tells you that you can control the other, that tells you that you have the capacity to have financial benefits or other benefits that you can achieve from impacting the other. And then you otherize every other. And that is what is the other danger of this otherness. And, and the other part of this situation is similar situation, similar power, similar authority, and the person says, we are one. We are one and we will make sure that we protect everyone to be able to do what they want to do. We want to make sure that everyone takes care of themselves but does not take away somebody else's right. And we live with those same emotions and the same powers and the same risks that all people in authority may develop at some point in their lives and their careers. As we look at the current status, the current status if you look at the list of all the rights about 70 years ago in the current modern day era, if you will, which have looked at those rights, which are the rights of practicing your faith, which are the rights to be able to sit down and then have a conversation in public or in private and say what you would like to say. Or the right to be able to not be persecuted because of your appearance or your background, rights to have a nationality, right to be able to work and be paid for it. All of those things are enshrined in documents. And in the current time, in the most developed time of history, look at the numbers of where we are. Look at the numbers of all the list of rights. And arguably we are in the worst state that we have ever been in our recent and long-term history of mankind. So we have failed the declarations from 539 BCE all the way to this time if you look at the bigger and broader impact that is expected. So what do we do? Well, the reality is, the good news is, that every time we get into this position, there are people who do stand up. There are people who stand up and inspire us to be able to do what is right. Stand up and we have had Martin Luther King, we have had Gandhi, we have had all of these inspirational people and in, in the past we had prophets who would actually tell us and bring about the beauty of our inner self outside. And that is the secret. The secret of all the leaders that have existed in the past who have allowed us to be better than who we are required 
the individuals to go inside of themselves and find that inner human that inner human who has unconditional love that inner human who actually looks at each other as one who actually lets go of the otherness and that inner human is equal opportunity in each and every human being there is and that inner human is the success and the secret of the success of all the people who have organized and gotten us to those documents and to the actions and today the time has come again for us in our local communities and beyond to go back and identify that inner human and, and, and recognize that we are one we will remain one and our universe is small right now but if everybody is united, this universe starts to increase. The other option is not an option. There is no outcome in that. This is the only option. And you know what? When you're part of this option, you sleep well. You sleep better. You sleep with a smile. You wake up with a smile. The other option is unhealthy. Even science is telling us that. So I'm honored that CHRP is doing this. I am honored of all the volunteers who put their time and effort into this work. And I, I just want to thank you for being here, for being a voice, for being in the environment to be able to say, no, I refuse. We will remain one and we will be one voice with lots of love. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you. Thank you.